Hello viewers. In this tutorial we will learn how to develop a typing tutor game. Our final version will look like what you see on the screen. We have a game panel at right and an initialize panel at the left. A user needs to initialize the game first and once the game is initialized you can start typing. The game is over when you have more than 7 characters in the box. And here in this tool strip control you can see stats and a timer control that runs itself every second. We will first develop the basic version of this game. So that you understand the logic and functionality. We will introduce this initialize panel later. So let's begin, first thing first. Open a Windows Form project and design your interface. Adjust form size to 1260 and to 360. Now drop a split panel on the form. The size of the game panel is almost double the size of the initialize panel. We will fix it properly after the size of the list box control. Now drag a list box control from the toolbox. Adjust font size to 30 pixels and the size of list box would be 850 pixels into 50 pixels. Now the one important thing you need to do here is Set multi-column property to true. By default every item in the list box is placed in a new row. If we don't enable multi-columns then we will have a vertical list of alphabets as you see on the screen. We do not want a vertical list consisting of a single column and several rows. We want instead a horizontal list with seven columns and one row. As you can see in the image on your screen. So set multi-column property to true and run the program. The interesting thing here is, the columns are not visible but they exist. We cannot show grids in list box. Another thing one should consider here is that, the size of each column depends on the font size. Our font size is 30 pixels which is quite large and because of that our list box is 850 pixels in length, so that we have at least 7 columns. You can even adjust these settings later on when you will populate your list box with characters, so you do not need to worry. Now we need to design the rest of the form. On your screen you can see all the controls we need and their property values. So pause the video here and complete your design. OK. The interface is ready and now we will write some code. The first thing we need to do is to generate alphabets in every second into the list box. Here we will use the timer control. This is a very useful control. Especially in the game development. Let's first take a look at the properties of timer control. By default timer is not enabled. And we will enable it via code. The timer interval is 1000 milliseconds. That is actually 1 second. That means timer will execute itself after every 1 second. Now check the event list. Here we have only one event that is, tick. You can read the description at the bottom that, a tick occurs whenever the specified interval time elapses. Create a tick event handler. Everything that you write inside this tick method will execute itself after every passing second, until the timer is not stopped. We will generate capital letters randomly so declare a random class object first. ASCII codes of capital letters range from 65 to 90. 
so we will randomly pick a ASCII code in this range and cast it to a character. Now add the character into the list box. You can even combine these two lines of code into single one. Now connect our start button to the program. The start button will actually start the timer control. Run the program. Program is working fine. We are getting characters randomly in each column and we have exactly 7 columns in a row. But we need to stop the game if list contains more than 7 characters at a time. Let's program the game over logic. We will say, if number of items count in the list is more than 7 so game is over and timer is stopped. Run the program. It is working fine. Our next step is to pick the pressing key on the keyboard. And match it against the character in the list. And then remove that character if the match is good. Select the list box and take a look at all the key events. .NET provides three event handlers to work with keys. These handlers are key down, key press and key up. Here we can work with both key down and key press. But I will choose key press because it is easier to manage. Another reason why I am choosing key press event is, the key press event is raised for character keys while the key is pressed and then released. But this event is not raised by non-character keys, unlike key down and key up. So attach the key press event to the list box. We will write an if statement and say, if the list box contains character that is pressed by the user, then simply remove that character from the list and refresh list items. Key press event handler has a key char property. Whenever a key is pressed, it is stored in key char property which can easily be accessed using e object. Don't forget to put focus on the list box when you start the game. 
putting focus is basically diverting cursor to the list box. Let's run the program and check if key pressing and R logic works. Our program is working as we expected. Now we will program game stats. Declare three variables, total, right and wrong. We will write a simple method containing a boolean argument and call it under every key press. Let's say, our method's name is update record. We will pass argument true if the user presses the right key, otherwise false. Now program the update record method, which is a simple one. Now publish and update the result in the tool strip label. Our program is complete now. Let's give it a final run. So that is the basic version of Typing Tutor game. In the next part we will enhance our game and introduce an initialized panel which I showed you at the beginning of this tutorial. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.